Okay, my friends, this is going to be fun. This is Comet Oumuamua, and this was thought to be possibly some form of alien spacecraft by this guy Avi Loeb. He wants to investigate it because it's given off more energy than it should, more light, more heat. Why is it doing that? They can't explain it. Well, if something was living there, they would be creating heat. That would explain it, wouldn't it? Now, I'm starting to get a warm, fuzzy feeling here. Loeb's theory was that Oumuamua was some kind of technological debris from an otherworldly civilization, drew worldwide attention. He became eager spokesman. He wanted to talk about it. He appeared not just on mainstream media outlets, but on UFO pod podcasts and conferences. That was his problem. They hate that. Most of Loeb's colleagues rejected his hypothesis immediately. Get out of here. Just get lost which he first laid out in 2018 and it published it and then they just forget about it. They mocked it, they dismissed it as a public stunt. What's really irritating is, is that Avi is a smart guy, says Karen Meech, a planetary astronomer at the University of Hawaii. He is a good scientist but he's out of fame here. He's just out for fame. He snubbed, the snubs gnawed at Loeb. They just ate away and finally he went crazy. <laughs> I love this guy already. His anger boiled over early last year at an online forum called the Golden Webinar, and astrophysicist who portrayed himself as the victim of a closed-minded scientific community. I love you, brother! <laughs> Unwilling to entertain bold hypotheses. Absolutely! If we listened to my colleagues, we would just forget about Umara, he said. We would not put any funds for cameras taking photographs of it. Then we will maintain our ignorance, just like the philosophers in Galileo's age. Exactly correct, obviously. I would love to engage my good brother. All right, this is Comet Umaua. I think that's how they pronounce it. I'm not sure, but it's a finger. And you're all, oh, come on, Roger. Well, I had autopsy people look at this, and they say there's no question whatsoever. It is exactly identical to a human finger in an anatomy. That's all they can say. They can't say yes, it is. No, it isn't. But here's what. Here's the grip skin. You see right here. That is the actual fingertip skin. This right here is the apical tuft, which is the emplacement of all of the tendons, the little bitty straps that run up. And here is an apical tuft as well. And it sits right there, just like that. And all of these little fibers lock in there. And that's what gives your fingers. And this is still one that still has a ball on it. All the other ones have pulled off. Now, that runs down to the first joint you have right here somewhere. And then the center one is right there. You see that? That's where it twists in the center. Then, you see that? That's a, like a, a strap. That is a regular tendinous strap. This is another emplacement. I'm going to show you over in the anatomical in a second. Then it runs down, and right down here, it is literally ripped out from this area right here and it's just torn away and that black right there and the white over there is the vein and the artery they have two different types of blood one of them turns black one of them turns red now in this picture that's the artery I'm almost 100% certain and that's the vein and this is exactly identical to human anatomy. Now, Avi Loeb says this could be a spaceship. Now, you say, well, it's not a spaceship if it's a fingertip. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. He could be absolutely right. All right, you see that? That is the blood where the blood flows in fingertips. And at the end, there is a ton of, of vascular cavities. Now, this is also a fingertip. That's the black, they call that the um, distal phalanges. That's where the bone is inside. You're probably are having a hard time seeing it, but it's a little black. Now, you see these holes here? This is the art of artery side. They blow out. Up here, up here, and up here. See? Boom, boom, boom. And one of them's an artery and one of them's a vein. The blood comes up, the other one comes back. The veins, this side here, see? They're plugged off. They're plugged off. Same thing at the end. It's plugged. The arteries blow right out because the arteries have no restriction. 
See the vein is here, the artery is here. All right, and that's the distal phalanges black bone pattern, if you can. And they should have an anatomist up there at Harvard, and they could take a look at it. Now, and we have, I have bones, I have all kinds of stuff. That, this is the mud fossil proce process, and it's nucleophilic substitution. They just have to look into it a little bit. I do all this stuff. I, you know, I'm, I'm into all this. And I'm going to show you some of the other stuff, because he's a physicist, too. And he should recognize something else I'm going to show you. All right, well, what's the takeaway? They could be living in a huge tunnels living in here, and if the thing is glowing brighter than it should be glowing, why is that? I would say that more than likely somebody's living in there. I mean, they could have every single thing they needed. It's it's body tissue. It has all of the hematite and magnetite and calcium and sulfur and sodium and everything you need, 100%. Ferrous, you know, all the hydrocarbons, I mean, it's exactly like what we're living on underneath our feet. Okay, this is Comet 67P. If you hear a lot of background digging and so forth, they were excavating right around here, so that's the noises you're hearing. This is Comet 67P, gigantic. That right there, my friends, just take your time, look at it. Th th those are bundles of either tendon fibrils or muscle fibers, but that round section came off and attached to a bone or somewhere else. These little straps here are tendinous fibers that came down to this ball which is a tendon enthesis. I studied this extensively. Now this one right here is where the artery is and the reason it's blowing out of here and it is blowing out meat smoke literally meat smoke. The astronauts say in space they smell like steak when they come in after walking. Their suits smell like steak. I'm not kidding you. And that is an artery and that is, they're open. And they call them dragon balls down in there. They're blood. It's blood. These are the little tiny blood vessels that service all of the round the leg, apparently, or whatever it was. I can't say exactly what this was, but it was embedded into something. All of these little spikes were, uh, there was a, a, a layer of tissue here. There had to be something that exploded and blew all these things out into space. And the moons are tendon balls too. I'm, I'm just going to lay it on the line. If he, if Avi Loeb has really got an open mind, he's going to have to talk to me because I have, I have the evidence. And th this is, I have also the spectral analysis of all this. I followed this, every single detail. And they were completely wide open with their research. And I fully understood it because I had already understood the mud fossils and how they petrify. I understand. And, and, and it's even to today, I think I'm just about the only one that does. And if Avi Loeb wants to engage, I would absolutely adore that. And that's the size of Common 67P. That's Raleigh, North Carolina. Now remember, I said I, this is probably a bone going down through there. And this leads up to the muscle tissue. And that's the tendon enthesis. Let me show you what it looks like in an anatomical view. All right, there's, there's several different types of tendons in your body, and some of them attach in like mats and fleshy areas, and some of them attach into a ball like that. This is the like 67P, and they break in an, an abrupt transition as they change between the different mineralizations. At a certain point, the tendons give way to muscle, and that's where it breaks. Now, I'm going to be sure Avi Loeb knows, I have 125,000 subscribers, and <clears throat> only maybe a thousand or two are heavily involved in this, but I go back many, many, many years. I was in nuclear uh, missiles during, when I was in the Army in, in the early 60, 68 to 70. Anyway, I realized there's only two types of, of dipoles. There's dipoles only. And and then you have to figure out polar and non-polar and all that business. But this was my, 50 years ago, I said the transfer of energy from light is to atomic vapor, which it, it, atomic vapor is positive and negative. Rutherford's atom was wrong. I had, uh, and I know what, he's up against but I have all kinds of evidence and now I have this was 50 years ago I finally got out of the physics because 
it was a, it was just you just had to say what they told you to say. And now this is my evidence. I have the evidence to prove what I was saying. And there's the tetra quarks right there. These are the things that they've been looking for. We found them years ago. These are the four particle tetra quarks they call them now. And this is light, so this is the smallest particles they make. As far as we know, light, no, they don't even know if it's a particle or not. Well, I can tell you right now, it's a no question whatsoever it's a particle. And it can exceed the speed of light. It pulled itself right out of its own magnetic wave. Normally, you'd have a wave, which is a magnetism. You don't see it. The particle's back here, and the wave it precedes it. And that's why they say it's a particle wave. Well, it's the particle's magnetic field creates a wave. And a wave pushes against all these little particles. You see? as it comes through. That's why they're glowing. And I will show you the, the actual particle interacting, because we have it right down to the particle level. There's the particle right there. And you say, well, Roger, how could you possibly see these little particles? We are seeing radiance. We are seeing enormous energetic reactions and then pixelated as a compilation. This is not, we're not seeing the, the actual molecules. We're seeing the radiance. And the black is dark matter. These are the Higgs fields coming out of our ears. We, and we can just continue this reaction forever. This is not like an instantaneous, spontaneous thing just happens and goes away. And this is exactly what they've been trying to do to get the muon neutrino and electron neutrino to split into muons and electron showers. There it is right there. And here is the actual particles and the way they glow and so forth. You know, you saw this, the particle being sucked through the Venturi. Right here is where it separates. That's where you get fission. I don't care how you cut it, that's fission. It's on a subatomic level. It's not like atomic fission where you have a big, huge chunk of particles and you break them into other big chunks of particles. This is light, which is the smallest particle. We broke them into muons and electron showers, and then they come right back together here. Fission, right there and fusion right here. And here is just absolutely enormous amounts of energy. So I think we might even be able to get free energy. Now, here's what the actual photons look like when they're concussing. That's the particle I showed you before. That's the, the, what they call a tetraquark now. The smallest particles that exist are these two particles. And just a, these two together is one electron, there's another electron glued back to just like bar magnets. And they are little part, tiny bar magnets, it looks like to me. And the black side is, it doesn't emit, it doesn't absorb, it doesn't reflect, and it does not compress. That's the thing that nobody's ever known before. That's dark matter, it's muons, whatever you want to call it. Now, here is that particle going through the air that way. You see this one glowing? And that one's not glowing? This one's concussing with the oncom well, the particles that are in front of it. That's what creates the wave and the particles and all those little flicky things I showed you before. The black does not, does not compress. These can compress and squirt through the, the, the venturi that we created. It's a tuned venturi, only allows the white through. The black cannot get through, but the black is so heavy and so hammery that it slams and pushes the white and squirts it through as you saw, into an absolute, absolute, you know, well, look at it. And that's because the black can't get through. Only the white can get through. And it bam, 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 bam. It's like throwing the thousands of bowling balls a second at some little white fluffy things and forcing it to go through there. And then they just go around. And, but they, they don't mind being on top of each other. The whites hate each other. They just get away from me, get away from me. That's what they set up. This is a single slit. That is not interference from flappy waves of a double slit. I have a lot to talk to you, Avi. Please, brother, get me a hold of me. You know, I can be extremely respectful, and I certainly, I know you'll take a hell of a lot of heat for talking to somebody like me, and you're probably taking a lot of heat, as, as I showed. Yes, you already have. So what's the matter, you know? We'll just roast it up another couple degrees, and we'll see what, because I have the evidence to support everything I'm saying. If you saw anything I said that I don't have evidence for, I want you to confront me on that. But I'd certainly like to have that discussion, my friend. I really do. And I can support every word that you've been saying. And I see no reason to think that that, that um, comet is not occupied. Why wouldn't it be? I mean, it's, it, the things that I have seen change everything. You know, I'm not bragging. If it's true, it ain't bragging.
All right, and I also want to talk to Avi Loeb about Emanuel Velikovsky's book, Worlds in Collision. He, he brings the whole thing to light. There's a lot of discussion needs to be done. I, I, I'm sure Avi Loeb must know about Emanuel Velikovsky. He's been maligned by academia, but he is known, but they laugh at him, and that's got to stop because he has the answers. He did the research and went to all of the museums and libraries and tablets and papyruses and all that stuff. And he, from everywhere, cartouches from South America, India, Asia, everywhere. And they all had the same story. And it was only 3,500 years ago. And it accounts for everything that I will show you or have shown you. And there was a hot water flood because of seven days of intense radiation because an extremely bright body came and almost hit our earth and at the same time literally boiled our oceans and waters and set the atmosphere on fire and wrench the earth and that's what caused all these catastrophes so it's time to look back at this again and I'm going to do a complete examination of his works because this is the archives and otherwise this would be totally forgotten and, and th these are the archives of everything that he wrote and his assistant wrote everything down and put it aside and these are his unpublished works and we're going to go through them